Hey guys, so now we're going to be computing the LALR and LR1 parsing table. Now this is another parsing technique and of course as as more we go into more parsing techniques, they, they, are, they get harder and at the same time they get uh, better at uh, detecting errors and all those, at the same time they are better at parsing as well. They are fast, uh, they are, uh, they are they're not that easy to do by hand but at the same time they are better and more accurate and more powerful than the pre previous parsing technique that we have studied. So LR1 and LR, LALR0, LALR1 parsing technique, what is the main difference? So LR1 stands for again, L stands for left to right. R stands for right, uh, uh, rightmost derivation and 1, like before we had LR0 and this time we have LR1 which means we have a look ahead concerned with it. So we look ahead one symbol and then we do the parsing. So uh, the main difference is that we have a look ahead symbol that we need to keep track of while drawing the automaton and uh, which might get a bit tricky if you have a big uh, context free grammar and all. But we're going to be looking at a basic context free grammar and give you an idea and then you can do the rest uh, if, you, if you do understand this properly. So as before we also have an augmented grammar, uh, uh, an augmented rule as before. So we have S prime goes to the start symbol which is S and then of course we're going to put a dot before that. Now we have a look ahead this time and this look ahead is called dollar. At the beginning initially we have dollar but later on the look ahead is going to change and I'm going to show you what changes and how it changes. Right, so now that dot is before s, we call all the rules that has s on the left hand side. So we have s goes to dot x x and we have dollar because the first of, just just focus on this part. This part is with the dollar, right? So everything after that, we take the first of that symbol and that becomes the look ahead for the closure. So we apply closure to s. And now we uh, brought this rule down. Then the first of whatever is up to this red red line, we put that as our look, look ahead. So this one would be, uh, it's a bit confusing I know, but as we go on you'll see with more examples you understand what I mean. Right, so we call S. Now we apply closure, now we apply closure to uh, what you call X and we call all the rules that has X in it. So x goes to dot a x and x goes to dot b. Now what will be the closure or what will be the look ahead for this? Now like I said, after this, this is the symbol that has dot. So we take the first of whatever we have left. So we have, we take the first of x dollar. So the first of x dollar is the first of x and the first of x is a or B so a B this is the first of X right right so now we're going to be taking uh, now we're just going to be writing the look ahead for this which is the first the look ahead for after applying closure to X the look ahead for this is a or B same goes for this a or B because we apply closure to X and we get two rules and for the two rules we have the same look ahead right now so let's move on. We uh, it's the same as before. Now we apply. Now we on input s. We go to s prime goes to s dot. Now when we are transitioning from one state to another, the look ahead will not change. The look ahead will be what we had previously. So dollar will remain. We don't need to worry about what would happen and how would how to take the first and all that. Nothing changes for for while transitioning. Nothing changes only. While applying closure, the look ahead is change. Look ahead changes. So on x, what do we get? S goes to x dot x, and the look ahead. Uh, since we're transitioning, the look ahead doesn't change. So look ahead will remain the same. And now we apply closure to x. So x goes to dot a x, and x goes to dot b. Now the what will be the uh, look ahead? Well, the look ahead will be, this is the symbol, right? So the look ahead will be whatever is after this. So dollar. So dollar will be the look ahead and dollar will be the look ahead for this. Right, next we apply, uh, tra we transition from um, from this to A, on symbol A. So we get X goes to A dot X and we'll have the same look ahead. 
and so we apply closure to x we get the rules of x so we have a dot a x and x goes to dot b and what we will look ahead whatever is left after this symbol we'll take the first of that so a or b that will be the look ahead right now uh, what happens when we apply close uh, when we transition on input b x goes to b dot and should while transitioning look ahead will remain the same and that's it that's one accepting state now let's transition on x so s goes to x x dot and dollar because while transitioning nothing changes and that's it no no more no more closure needs to be applied for this and for this on input a we go to x goes to a dot x and while transitioning doesn't change and we apply closure to x and we get ax dot ax and the first of dollar will be the look ahead and x goes to dot b dollar will be the look ahead then we apply uh, we transition with input symbol b and we get x goes to b dot and while transitioning look ahead will remain the same so we've reached except uh, accepting state for b for ax for xx let's number the states this is i0 i1 i2 i i3 i4 right so we still haven't reached the accepting state for this rule rule number two so let's do that so x on on input x we go to x goes to a x dot and dollar will be the look ahead because uh, tra while transitioning we don't change the look ahead only during closure which uh, we take the first of that of that rule uh, after the the symbol over here we take the first whatever is remaining of that and then we apply that as the look ahead so again for this on x we go to x goes to a x dot and the look ahead will be a or b so let's number this again now what now this what we've constructed over here it's called lr1 uh, lr1 parsing automaton now what is lalr automaton so lalr is uh, is just a shorter version for this which is like a more compact version of lr1 parsing uh, of lr1 parsing table in the sense that as you can see over here this is more complex but if we did with lr lr0 uh, lr0 automaton if we would use the lr0 rule where with no look ahead we would have considerably lesser uh, uh, like fewer states we have nine uh, we have 10 state right now but as you can see we have this this state i3 and i6 they're kind of same doing the same thing if we were doing lr0 automaton or slr1 automaton for this we would actually get this and this as one state but they're differing in case of look aheads that's why we have separate states for this in lr1 in lr1 parsing we have separate uh, for we have separate states for um, diff uh, with the similar rules but different look ahead but in LALR we combine these two and make it one whole state right so now I3 and I6 will be combined to one whole state so we get I let's just yeah so we get I so I3 and I6 can be combined to one whole state so we get I36 as one state and as you can see this i9 and i8 also have the similar sort of states but they only differ in look ahead so i8 and 9 could be another state and what else is similar hmm now this one i4 and i7 so we have another state i4 and i7 so we combine them because the rules are same but only the different look aheads so essentially what will happen is we'll get an automaton that looks looks somewhat like this so this is the LALR automaton as you can see it has been reduced to 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 only 7 states and originally here the, in the LR1 parsing table parsing automaton there were uh, 10 states 0 to 9 10 states but here we combine some states which has similar rules but different look aheads into one one whole state and we get this automaton so 
the problem with this is when we when since we're doing this by hand LALR will LALR uh, to compute LALR even though it's much smaller than LR1 and of course LR0 even though it's much smaller we still have to compute LR1 first and then compute LALR so that's there's still a pickle there's still you still have to do a lot of computation while you are doing it by hand of course so yeah so the main problem lies there is that you if you're trying to compute LALR automaton you still have to compute LR1 automaton as well so that's how this looks that's how basically it works um, I hope you understood the whole look ahead concept you basically just wherever you have um, whenever you applied closure after that you get new states right so for example you applied closure to X you get new states so in those new states they'll have look aheads they'll have a different look ahead so basically look at the symbol that has a dot before it and after that whatever symbols are left you take the first of that symbol so X has a dot before it, but it has two symbols left after that including the look ahead including its own look ahead so we take the first of these two symbols and then we get uh, the first of two these two symbols gives the first of x and then the first of x give us a, gives us a or b and then that becomes our next look ahead and during transitioning we never change the look ahead it always is the same as before only while applying closure and when while applying closure when we get new states we apply um, what you call we get new look aheads so yeah that's about it for lr1 and lalr automaton uh, the table will uh, uh, in the next video I'll show how the table looks for this but I think you can compute the table because it's the same thing but I'll still show it in uh, uh, I'll still show it to just to get a good idea about how it looks like and all so yeah give the thumbs up if you understood if you if you like this series and support this series and uh, good luck